evening and a very warm welcome to those of you who are gathered in our church and to those of you joining us online. I'm not quite sure where, <laughs> where to look, but welcome to St. John's Evensong Service of Word and Prayer, led by the wonderful musical talents of David, our musician, and the host of Choral and Organ Scholars. And as always here at St. John's, we recognize that we live, work, and play on the traditional, unceded, and ancestral lands of the Lekwungen speaking peoples who are known today as the Songhees in the Esquimalt Nations. And we are on a journey of faith and hope alongside the Indigenous communities of renewed friendship and um, reconciliation. Uh, alongside the Indigenous communities of these lands who have stewarded since time immemorial. Excuse me. So no matter who you are or where you're from, you are very welcome here. Oh Lord, open thou our lips. And
The first lesson is from the book of Ecclesiastes, also called Kohelet. Send your bread on the face of the waters, for in many days you will find it. Give a share to seven and even to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. If the thick clouds are full of showers, on the earth they empty themselves. Or if a tree falls in the southern region or in the north, the place where the tree falls, there it is. One who shelters wind will not sow, and one who sees thick clouds will not reap. As you have no knowledge what the way of the Spirit is, with respect to the bones in a filled belly, so also you do not know the deed of God that does it all. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not let your hand rest, for it is not for you to know how this will succeed, this or that, or if the two of them as one are good. Sweet is the light, and it is good for the eyes to see the sun. For if many years the earthling lives, in all of them glad, let it remember the days of darkness, for many they will be. All that comes is futility. Be glad, chosen one, in your childhood, and let your heart make you feel good in your chosen days, and walk in the ways of your heart, and in the regard of your eyes, and know that over all these, this God will conduct you into judgment. So put aside grief from your heart, and pass through evil from your flesh, for childhood and the times of dawn are futility. Remember your Creator in the days of your prime, while evil days have not yet come, or years touch that you say, there is no delight in them for me. While the sun is not darkened, or the light, or the moon, or the stars, and the thick clouds return after the showers, in the day that the keepers quaver inside, and personal ability is subverted, and the grinders are idle, for they are few, and the seers in the slits are sooty, and the portals are latched in the souk. Abased is the voice of the grinding, and one arises at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of the song are depressed. Even from aloft they fear, and dismay is in the way, and the almond is spurned, and the grasshopper is burdened and the appetite is without effect. For the earthling walks to his obscure house, and those who wail circle in the souk. While the pledge of silver is not distant, or the golden globe splintered, or pitcher broken at the font, or the tumbleweed splintered by the pit, and the dust returns upon the earth as it was, and the wind returns to this God who gave her an utter futility, touts the Kohelet, total futility. And it remained that Kohelet became shrewd. Still he taught the people knowledge, and he listened and he examined, and he straightened out many proverbs. Kohilet sought to find delightful things and wrote upright things of truth. The words of the shrewd are as goads and as nails planted by the owners of gathered sayings given from one shepherd. And of what remains from these, my child, be admonished. Of the making of many records there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh. The conclusion of the matter, the whole, let us hear. Fear this God 
and keep his commandments. For this is the whole for the earthling. For this God will make every deed come into judgment out of all obscurity, whether good or evil. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is from the Gospel of Luke. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Here ends the second lesson.
Let us pray. You, Creator God, know and understand our needs intimately well. We long for your wisdom and guidance informing us to become faithful servants to you and to each other. Gift us with your grace to open our hearts so that we may love our neighbors as you love us. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, that our divisions may be healed, and that we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving God and maker of all, we come into your presence this evening deeply grateful for your creation and abundance. As we look around us, we are amazed at the greatness and majesty of all that you have made. Nature around us speaks of your greatness the vast expanse of the sky, the mountains, the trees, oceans, lakes, and streams. You have given us such beauty in the colors of the rainbow and the richness, wonder in flowers and fields. Words cannot adequately express the magnificence of all you create. Enable us to show our love and reverence to you, God, by deeply caring for all that you have created. O Heavenly Father, who hast filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works that rejoicing in thy whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God and lover and carer of all peoples, we pray this evening for your comfort and assurance in our times of need, in our times of struggle, and in our times of uncertainty. Lift our hearts towards you and make our church community truly thankful for all you bless us with. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth. Hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The book of Ecclesiastes is one book that helps us to face and engage in life in all its realities. The parts of life we love, and also the parts of life we might be inclined to avoid. The strong consensus of scholarship is that the book ends with the author describing our demise in old age, and then ending how the author began. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. Everything wisps away, life can't be grasped, controlled or cheated, and death comes for us all. The implicit question being, how will we spend our lives? Will we spend them living, becoming aware of the good around us? Will we spend them alive to the people around us, the gifts, the places, the food and the drink that we are so privileged to live with and to enjoy and share with others generously? Perhaps the book of Ecclesiastes was understood as a deeply spiritual, deeply philosophical book, but it seems it needed an afterword and epilogue to have it included in Israel's canon. We'll never know for sure, but whether a disciple or a literary editor, this is the voice of someone who is trying to explain and interpret. So, in that sense, it's very beautiful because it's the voice of anyone attempting to take the message seriously. The words of Scripture invite all of us to wrestle and contemplate, to be inspired and molded by the Creator of everything around and beyond us, our living God. Our separate and shared stories impact and enrich our lives. It's how we build friendship, fellowship, and communion. Jesus himself used his stories and parables to invite and challenge the views and assumptions of his listeners. Often, a parable would be met with shock, astonishment, chins dropping to the ground in disbelief, and yet some people would hear these parables and be changed by them. Yet more people would hear them and experience the love of God breaking through into their situation. The primary target audience in our gospel message this evening is clear. Jesus told this parable for people who were overconfident, let's say, in their own sense of righteousness. In this case, the Pharisees. In the Gospels, the Pharisees often get a bad rap. But in the Pharisees' defense, they were highly religious people who attempted to be meticulous in their liturgical and religious practice. And this is absolutely not a bad thing. When I was preparing this sermon, I came across an interesting word. Let me see if I can say this right. Pharisaism. When I say Pharisaism, I am not talking about the Jewish people or Judaism. I am talking about an archetypal human tendency to codify, solidify, and become narrow thinkers. Pharisaism is not about a particular people or a particular religious tradition. It's a human condition that affects all people and all traditions at one time or another. And it is as real today as it was in Jesus' time. Pharisaism is the mother of all profiling. Profiling is what happens when we look at the outside of another human and then draw conclusions and judgments about their hearts, their minds, and their way of being. Looking through that lens has a way of drawing us toward conclusions and judgments that can devalue, strip the dignity, and deny another person's worth as one of God's beloved and treasured creations. 
Just this past week, I learned of a man two provinces, two provinces over who, as one of the prominent anti-vaccination, anti-restriction activists, is now very ill with COVID-19. I couldn't help but gloat and feel a little smug and justify, justified upon finding out this man's condition. After all, he flouted public health measures, protested in large group gatherings against vaccinations, and spread what can only be called as dangerous conspiracy theories. But the conclusions and judgments I drew about this man were always in my favor and always against him. And isn't that what the Pharisee is doing to the tax collector in today's gospel? God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. The truth is we all have a little tendency to other people sometimes, and when we do, we can lose our compassion and mercy. And then we cannot see the others as our neighbors. The Pharisee in our gospel is seeing only the outside of the tax collector. The Pharisee has no idea about the tax collector's fears, hopes, dreams, aspirations, pains, and struggles. The Pharisee has no idea that he and the tax collector just might be a little more alike than he knows or wants to believe. Even as I make these statements about the Pharisee this evening, I fully recognize that I am doing to the Pharisee what the Pharisee is doing to the tax collector. I recognize myself in the Pharisee and the Pharisee in me. The Pharisee in today's gospel isn't a bad person. He isn't wrong or worse than the tax collector. He's afraid, afraid of losing power, status, and a fairly comfortable lifestyle. So he justifies himself. And we all do that from time to time. When we depart from here this evening, and indeed always, may our prayer be that the Christ in me see and honor the Christ in you, and the Christ in you see and honor the Christ in me. Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen.